every day all across the world sunrises beam across the skies for over 7 billion people I guess it's what they call a beautiful mess every day the world churning tuning listening shouting screaming into eternity the three most important days of any human's life is the day they're born the day they realize why they were born and the day they die the interesting thing about being a human being isn't only the fact that we were born but it's also the fact that we know one day we will die we ask ourselves these questions when we look at the news or we hear about famine, plague, disease, destruction. We celebrate the blessing called life every day when we get a promotion, we graduate from college, we buy a new car, or maybe we even get a new house. I wonder today if you were told you were coming close to the end, how you would view life through a new lens. So often we put down the camera full stop because we don't see the need to look at the end. We just have to look at now. Well, I want to tell you the story, and I want you to listen to the story of a remarkable woman who knew twice in her life that death was at the door, but also knew that eternity was waiting. Why don't you listen to that story now from her very own mouth? I haven't come to you today to tell you about religion or to tell you about what man has brought into this world. But I have come to tell you about a saviour, a king, a loving and gracious father. The one that can change your life and change everything about you. The story that I'm going to tell you is the story of my own life. I was born the second youngest of a family of eight. We came from a Roman Catholic background. And though we were told to go to Mass and go to all the sacraments and every week we had three and four things to go to, we didn't know the peace of God, we didn't know who Jesus was. All we did know in our background, behind closed doors, was a father that was extremely violent. As a young child, I remember seeing my mother being beaten most of the time to protect our children. The peace was never in our home. I suffered at the hand of an abuser from an early age to nearly 14 in my life. I retaliated in my own way by going out and starting to drink. I started to drink at 14. And again, I was 19 or 20, I was starting to take blackouts. I was on the road to destruction and I knew it, but I could not do anything about it. Drink was the only thing that gave me peace of mind. And as anybody that drinks knows, it only gives you peace of mind for seconds. At the age of 29, a man came to me and he told me about Jesus. I remember I scoffed, I laughed, I ridiculed him. But the Lord was still gracious and good to me. Within six months, he had brought me to a place that I just could not get out of. The pain, the horror of my past was constantly there with me. I was in a black hole that I couldn't get out of. No religion, no man, nothing to help me at this stage. Only the Lord Jesus. And one Friday night as I was in my brother's house and he'd been witnessing to me and telling me about Jesus and what the Bible had to say, I went to bed and I remember thinking one thing he said. In the Bible it says, God says we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if God said we're all sinners, then he knows every one of us. So that cuts out religion and that cuts out man. And it just leaves you and me with a relationship to God. And if he says we're sinners and that he sent his son, then that's exactly what he done. That night I fell on my knees before the King of Kings and I asked Jesus to forgive my sins. I didn't have to be told I was a sinner. I knew what I was like. I knew I had a get back Lord God attitude and I couldn't get rid of it. But when I bowed a knee before him and I asked him into my life, he has become my personal Lord and Saviour. He broke the chains of bondage of drink and the chains of bondage of the immoral life that I was leading. And he brought me into a place of peace. He brought me into a place that my sins are forgiven. 
my hope of her eternal life is secure. He took away all the pain and all the suffering of younger years and he replaced it with love. He was even able to bring me to a place that the abuser in my life could be forgiven. It's a place that I thought I'd never get to because I held hatred and I held, held such vengeance towards this person, no. But he brought me to a place that I could forgive. He brought me to a place that the peace that he flooded into my heart he changed my life, and I know this Jesus, and I know he can change your life. He can take away your darkness, he can take away your heartache, most of all, he can take away your sin. And if you open the Bible and you read what I read, every one of us are sinners, every one of us has fallen short of the glory of God, and only Jesus and Jesus alone came to take that sin away. That leaves out the, the priest that leads out, out, the rabbi that leads out, all the rest. It just leaves the Lord Jesus. I never thought for one moment in my life that I would ever be able to love another man, that I would ever be able to have a marriage or have peace. And God has given me all of it. He has given me a beautiful son. He has given me peace and joy. He has given me everything. And my prayer today is that somebody listening to this would accept him as their Lord and Saviour and to find the peace, the love and the joy that I have found in my life. Every story does have a beginning, a middle and an end. I'm a firm believer that there's three extraordinary moments that every human being has to experience. It's the moment you're born, the moment you die, and the moment you realize why you were born. And the story that you've just listened to coming from the mouth of my own mother is an extraordinary story. But what you listened to was the beginning of her story and a partial middle of her life. I want to tell you what happened after that recording because in her life she faced a lot of obstacles, but also at the same time she faced a lot of grace and a lot of blessing. A number of years after that recording was made, in an office in St. James's Hospital in Dublin city centre, my mother, Mary O'Neill, was told that she had an aggressive form of metastasized cancer. What a devastating report. To say that that news didn't rock our family would be a complete and utter lie because it didn't only rock her as an individual or rock her faith, it challenged both myself as a young person at only 12 years old and also my dad. But it, about two weeks after the initial news, I remember wholeheartedly my mom sitting me down after just undergoing her first surgery in extraordinary pain, looking me dead in the eye and saying, you don't worry, son, God just told me that I'll dance with you at your wedding. The years that followed weren't easy by any measure. Uh, bouts of chemotherapy, bouts of radiation, multiple surgeries, a season of remission, and then a season of re-diagnosis with a stage four cancer diagnosis. In 2016, we learned that my mother not only had cancer, but also had a, a growing form of cancer that was stage four, a terminal cancer that they said that they could maintain, but they could never cure. But in the midst of it all, my mother held on to the hope that Jesus promised her that she danced at her son's wedding. It was a funny story because at the time I was single. I didn't even have a girl in my life. But in the midst of a lot of uncertainty, a lot of brokenness, a lot of heartache, she held on to a savior who said, in the midst of every trial, I'll be with you. In Psalm chapter 34, it says, the Lord comes close to the brokenhearted and he meets the broken in spirit. I really believe that. I was so broken in spirit. My mother was so broken in spirit, but yet at the same time, there was a lot of hope. I remember one occasion when after a series of chemotherapy, my mother had to shave her head. She turned to me and she said, this body is only temporary. I don't worry too much about these things because I know what awaits me after I die. This year, in the midst of a global pandemic, I had the opportunity in the midst of a lot of busyness to slow down and spend a lot of time with my mom. Locked in a house, watching Marvel movie after Marvel movie, Disney movie after Disney movie, she started to feel quite unwell. We started to notice that there was things that were changing quite rapidly. Mobility was starting to become an issue. Uh, some anxiety was starting to become an issue and she felt like something wasn't feeling right. My mother went into the hospital and was told that her stage four cancer had metastasized and 
that they wanted to give her another bout of chemotherapy. She looked the doctor in the eye and she said, do you think I'll make it to attend my son's wedding in the autumn time if I take this chemotherapy? And fair play to the doctor. He gave her quite an honest report and said, I really don't think so, Mary. My mom looked the doctor in the eye and said, I'm not taking that chemotherapy then. A number of months later, due to a series of different scenarios, my mother had to go to the amazing people at Harold's Cross Hospice and spend a week there. Just to pinpoint what was going on, there was a couple of things that are quite uncertain. And on top of the stage four cancer diagnosis, she was also told that she had motor neuron disease, a degenerative disease that slowly will start to debilitate you and in the end will take your life. I remember that meeting with the doctor. It was the first one in my whole life that I had attended when a diagnosis had been made. The doctor looked at me with tears standing in my eye and I looked him in the eye and I said, do you think my mom will be at my wedding? And he looked at me, he looked at my mom and he smiled and he said, I don't see a major problem with that. I remember that moment so well because it only happened so recently. She grabbed my hand, she looked me dead in the eye and she said, Josh, what's the worst thing that could happen to me? I die? That's not so bad. I know where I'm gonna go. I know where my hope is. And I remember she looked at me and she said, didn't I tell you I'd dance with you at your wedding? The weeks that followed were quite traumatic. They were quite distressing, but also at the same time, they were filled with so much happiness. I was about to marry the love of my life. She was about to see our son get married. And the week before the wedding, unbeknownst to a lot of people, she took quite sick. Uh, for a number of days, the doctors and nurses were uncertain whether she would be able to attend the wedding or not. Different parts of her body started to give issues. She was bound to a wheelchair. She wasn't able to eat to the same way that she did before. But just as you listen to the recording beforehand, she understood that her hope wasn't found in this world. It wasn't found in her body. It wasn't found in me or her husband, my dad. It wasn't found in what the doctors had to say because they had been wrong so many times before. Her hope was found in Jesus. Her hope was found in eternity. The day before the wedding, my mom took quite ill and family members came over. There was such a sense of stress and anxiety because I wasn't sure if she'd be able to attend, never mind stay over for the weekend. Well, the night before, she actually turned back around and for 24 hours straight, my mother was in the best form she had ever been in. My mother, the morning on my wedding, as I walked by her bedroom, whistled out to me like she always used to do when I was a little boy playing at football on the street. I heard that whistle that I'd heard so many times before. She whistled for me, she called me into the bedroom, she heard her phone, and on a docking station, she was playing a beautiful Dean Martin song that we used to always listen to when I was younger. She stood up out of her wheelchair, something I hadn't seen her do in so long. She hit play on her phone and danced to a Dean Martin song with me. Only five days later did my man peacefully pass away in Harold's Cross Hospital to meet her saviour. Now that might sound like a quite a traumatic story. It might seem like a lot of it is quite hopeless. But I want to remind you that right now all we as a family are feeling is hope. All man felt in the end was hope and peace. I have the complete utter privilege to say that I was holding her hand as she passed away in the most peaceful, extraordinary manner. Why? Because the Bible says that in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Not me, not my mom, not my extended family, not my church, but my saviour, her saviour, Jesus. And just like the recording you just listened to, my mom wanted to encourage everybody out there to maybe give Jesus an opportunity. Maybe that means that right now you're just going to close your eyes and you're just going to reflect on what is my life? I know the beginning. I know the day I was born. I kind of know the middle. Things seem quite normal at the minute. The one thing we don't have is a promise of tomorrow. That's quite a scary thought. In a scary world, that's a scary thought. But my mother, Mary O'Neill, knew that it wasn't so scary when she knew where she was going to go. And that was her hope. In the midst of abuse, addiction, disease, she found salvation. And that overrode everything else. And I wanna give you that hope as well, just like she did. Jesus wants to give you a free gift of his love, his forgiveness, his acceptance. That's more important than that degree you're striving for, that mortgage approval you're really hoping for. Maybe that relationship that's just been breaking your heart year in and year out. There's nothing more devastating than being told you have six months to live. My mother was told that twice. And both times she outlived that prognosis. Not because of anything she did, 
because she held on to the promises of God. And then two days before she died, she looked at the nurse who came to the house and said, I think I'm ready to go to heaven now. 48 hours later, that's what happened to her. To say that we haven't felt grief would be a lie, but to say that we haven't felt hope and certainty, knowing that that prize that she already told you about earlier on in the recording, about eternity, is now something she is living in right now. I hope on this Mother's Day, or maybe the days afterward, if you're listening to this video, that you'll feel that hope, and you might give that Jesus a chance to not only change your life, but to change your eternity. Maybe you're watching this and you're really going through a hard time as well. I want you to know that you can take heart knowing that there's a loving savior who's waiting, knocking, hoping that you will accept that love in your own life. I hope wherever you are, you're having an amazing Mother's Day. Maybe you want to share this with someone who's feeling a bit dark. It's just a simple story. It's a real story. It's our story. It's the story of Mary O'Neill. Thanks for watching.